So in this video, I want to talk about the stats that we've been getting off of our vehicle to grid setup. So we've had vehicle to grid running now for a couple of months now. and We've started to get some data coming in um, via the My Energy setup that we've got here in the home. It's actually been really useful to have this My Energy setup in the home because the actual vehicle to grid system isn't really designed to give you any information about what's actually happening and how the energy is going uh, in, when it's going in and out. Really, unless you're actually looking at the charger and listening to it working, you're not really going to know uh, what it's doing. You can glean a little bit of information off of your um, electricity meter uh, uh, in-home device, uh, you know, if you haven't put it in a drawer somewhere. Um, but um, obviously that's only a snapshot in time, it's only if you're looking at it at the time you can actually see what's what's going on there. So um, the My Energy setup has been really, really useful for me to understand what's going on here uh, in, in the home with the vehicle to grid stuff going on. Now we've had the My Energy stuff ever since we've had an electric vehicle, um, which is a good few years now. Um, we got the original Zappi unit um, when, uh, when, you know, when they kind of first came out. Um, and it's been great. Uh, one of the reasons that we got the My Energy stuff in the first place was because we already had solar panels fitted and we wanted to put some of that solar energy directly into the electric vehicle. And the My Energy products allow you to do that. Um, there is also an Eddy device which allows you to put the uh, solar energy uh, from your solar panels into the immersion heater. Now there are other devices that do that, but buying the My Energy one meant that we could prioritize between Eddy and the Zappi unit, whereas you know, they'd just be kind of a bit of a bun fight if you had something from another, uh, another manufacturer, which we, which we did at the time um, before we got the, before we got the, uh, the Zappi unit. So we swapped that out for the Eddy. Um, as well as the Eddy and the Zappi, we have the hub, which gives us a connection to the internet and, and, and allows us to report the data up to the My Energy servers, um, where, we can, where we actually get these graphs from. Uh, and then we have a Harvey unit. Uh, the Harvey unit isn't required. It's not a um, uh, required unit really. Um, but what it does do is it gives you a wireless connection um, if where you need to put your measuring clamps on your on your electricity supply if they're nowhere near the Eddy or the Zappi units, which in our case they're not. So it's actually a very very useful device to have now. On the screen here, what we've got is the kind of before story. So this is this is sort of my house before vehicle to grid is happening. So it is installed, but there's not actually any vehicle to grid stuff going on in this picture. And it's just to kind of give you an idea of how the my energy graphs are are drawn out before we start getting into. Uh, the, uh, the 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 rest of these diagrams, I thought it'd be just useful to see. So what's going on here? So first thing um, is beware of the scales. So across the bottom is time, obviously, and uh, on the vertical axis is your number of kilowatts, um, either above the line, above the grey line, uh, consumed, or below the line exported out to the grid. Now this scale peaks at four kilowatts in the, in the, in the consumed direction and two kilowatts, uh, minus two kilowatts in the exported direction. Now as we go through some of these diagrams what you'll see is that scale change massively depending on how much energy is being consumed in the home over the course of a day and because we charge our cars overnight, what you'll also find is that anything significant happening in the home over the course of the day will be crushed down because of the, you know, the, the, the much larger things going on when doing something like charging an electric vehicle, for example. So have a watch out for scale. In red, we have the household load. Um, now that's just your kind of general background load. Now that's going to vary hugely on people's different houses, but this is about four to 500 watts of background load in in our house that's kind of what we what we run at yellow that we have here is our solar export and then uh, we can also see 
the green, which is our consumed generation. Now, eagle-eyed among you will see that across the course of the day, there are there are things going on here which, which don't make a lot of sense because you can see that actually the solar generation is being entirely consumed apart from at some points uh, where it's going yellow uh, by the house. Now, you, you might be confused by that, but actually don't worry, that's fine because actually what's happening here um, is that those uh, devices, those my energy devices that I talked about in the introduction, are uh, are basically uh, uh, loads that will uh, use solar power if it is available, and if it's not available, they won't use it. And so you can see that's why the solar generation is being matched by consumption in our home. So if the sun is shining, it will heat the hot water. If the electric car is plugged into the zappy unit, it will charge the car and it will charge the car only to the amount that is being generated from the solar panels. So it won't consume any, um, any, any energy in from the grid. Well, it, if, you don't, if you can configure it to do that, but um, in my case, I've configured it to only use uh, the kind of excess solar. So we can think of these things as discretionary loads in the house that will actually start to consume energy if free, free, um, solar energy is available uh, from from the sun. Now let's just break that down a little bit more. So here's another graph which splits apart the uh, consuming loads in the home and then it becomes a little bit more obvious what's going on here. So what you can see here in turquoise is the water heater which is the eddy device and it's just going along and heating up the hot water as much as it can and then switching off again. The blue here is the electric vehicle, the Zappi charger. And you can see here it's then charging uh, the car through the afternoon and tailing off as the sun starts to uh, move over to the, to the front of the house and, and set. Um, so that's, and then the water heater cut, cuts in again um, a, a little bit in the evening. So you can see what these discretionary loads are coming in and doing in the consuming uh, the energy. Through the day as well, the household loads, just the general household loads shown here in, in kind of a burgundy colour, are, are coming in and, and also using uh, energy as well. So this could be things like the kettle running, cooker, um, you know, oven, all of that kind of stuff going on there, cup of tea in the morning, that sort of stuff. Uh, maybe something again in the middle of the middle of the morning. So, you know, there's there's things going on here which are again consuming the load, and they'll consume some of the solar generation, but they'll probably also pull a bit in from the grid as well. That's the first. Uh, uh, that's the first day. No vehicle to grid going on there whatsoever. Second day. Um, that I've picked, which is actually the day before. Um, we can see that what I mean about the scale. So here the scale has, uh, has, uh, has gone up to 9 kilowatts uh, because we've got an EV charging overnight. Now this will be being charged by the Zappi unit uh, because the Zappi unit is programmed to charge the car from half past midnight to half past four in the morning and no more. And that's because we get 5p per kilowatt hour uh, between those times from our Octopus Go tariff. You can see what's happened through the day is everything else looks now really small. It's just the same as the other day that I was just showing you, but because the scale is set at nine kilowatts now, everything else looks like nothing's going on. But it's the same kind of daily loads that are happening in the house. Sun's come up, discretionary loads are then using the solar, so there'll be a bit more EV charging going on there potentially, there'll be some water heating going on there, and then a trickle of it is being exported where actually we can't, um, use any of that any of that energy so that's kind of EV charging that again this is the kind of stuff that was happening before vehicle to grid on this day um, again I've just broken down uh, some of the things that we can start to see using the my energy uh, my energy stuff so we've got the export we've got the solar consumed generation here we've got the scale back down at four kilowatts but also we can see different devices going on so we can see the kettle in the morning a very high spike, some cooking going on around tea time, 
and the dishwasher coming on in the evening. Well, I think it's the dishwasher because you've got these very sort of spike heat cycles coming in. So I'm thinking it's uh, heating the hot water, doing a cycle, heating the hot water again, and then maybe doing a drying thing um, at the end of its uh, at, at the end of its washing. Um, so we can see a kind of this is what uh, this is what the uh, the house is doing. Again, no vehicle to grid in here. But important to note this cooking one at around five, six o'clock, because uh, that's when you know the vehicle to grid is going to start to come in and um, remove some of that demand from the grid um, at that peak time. So here we go. This is the first one we've got now with some vehicle to grid action. Um, so the scale you can see is still up at eight kilowatts, so everything else looks a bit crushed. But you can see now the negative scale has gone down to, to, to actually more than four kilowatts um, because we have a huge amount of energy being exported um, over, uh, you know, between kind of five and uh, uh, seven o'clock, maybe just before seven o'clock there. Um, and we also have this kind of weird moment of charging, a bit weird. Um, but it looks like what's happening here is the vehicle to grid system uh, when the car's plugged in after I get home from work or whatever, uh, when it gets plugged in, it kind of starts charging first, which is not desirable. Um, and then it goes, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be doing vehicle to grid, aren't I? And then it kind of cuts in and, and does that. So this is an interesting one because it just shows that interesting spike. Um, the rest of the stuff going through the day is, 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 is as is normal, but we can see here that there is no cooking load happening because it's completely absorbed by the vehicle to grid going out and that's why the vehicle to grid is jagged because it's exporting exactly the same amount of energy through this period but the house is consuming a differing amount so you can think about us here as cooking our dinner as usual but because we've got the vehicle to grid exporting we can see that we're taking big chunks out of the car's energy going out to the grid before it goes out to the grid. Uh, and we've still got the dishwasher going on late into the evening there. So what we can see here on this slide is a uh, you know, big charging session going on um, and then vehicle to grid happening again uh, a little bit earlier today. Um, and I, and I, I have no control over that, right? I have no control apart from not being here and not, not having the car connected to the house. We've got no control over when these sessions begin so this is something that the energy company is is kind of sending down as a command to the car you know start pushing energy to the grid at this time of day or that time of day and clearly that could be based on the demand on the on the grid at the time and all that kind of stuff we can see it's coming on um, and again all of our consumption um, between that time is completely gone we're not importing any energy um, but you can see where the house is using energy because we, we're taking big chunks out of the, um, the, 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 the vehicle to grid session, uh, leaving the home. So anything in yellow is leaving the home. And when it starts to, you know, when these jagged lines start cutting into it, that's when we're taking energy out of it, which is, um, which is really interesting. Now this next slide shows the pretty similar behavior on the vehicle to grid, it's about the same time of the day. Um, but we can also see that the scale has crushed completely now because the import is at 12 kilowatts uh, because we're actually not just charging uh, the via the Zappi, we're also charging via the vehicle to grid. Um, it's interesting how much uh, the vehicle to grid has actually charged. So it clearly didn't need to charge that much to get to the to the 70% uh, mark. But um, uh, you know, when when you set the app on the vehicle to grid. Um, you get a uh, you get a preference for how much charge you need to have in the car by eight o'clock in the morning, uh, or whatever time in the morning you need to use your car, um, uh, and and that's that's kind of what it's doing there. And then the other car is charging here. So the other interesting thing about this is the current limiting is one way. You know, it's not limiting the current coming into my house. I can bring as much energy as my fuse can can handle coming in. The energy company are really the, well, the DNO, the distribution network operator who look after the, the grid in the local area, they care about how much energy I'm pushing back because obviously that's, the, that's what they're a bit worried about. Um, there's nothing wrong with lots and lots of energy coming in. 
this way. So we're pulling over 12 kilowatts um, into the home at that point. And then again, there's another vehicle to grid session um, between uh, you know the, the sort of four and, and six o'clock there. So, um, and again, no consumption whatsoever by the home on from the grid over that over that period of time, which is really cool, uh, really cool to see. And again, on this day, um, a very, very similar situation going on here, but two cars charging for a lot longer over the um, uh, over, overnight, uh, over the night period there, um, and a vehicle to grid session happening between four and, and six in the evening. Now this set of graphs is really interesting because what we can see here is something I didn't expect, but I'm, you know, I'm not in control of how the vehicle to grid um, EV charge works. So all I can do in the vehicle to grid app is set a, a time for when I want a certain percentage of electricity in the car. So I can go into the app and I can say by eight o'clock in the morning, I need the car to have at least 70% uh, uh, battery charge. Um, now, the thing here is that the charge is happening between the hours of six and eight. So it's kind of like, oh my God, I need to charge the car um, because he's gonna need it by eight o'clock in the morning. Um, now I have actually noticed, I think there's a little bug because it doesn't always charge to the 70%. It sort of seems to be about 65%. Uh, so there's a little bug there and I think they're working on that. Um, but this is falling outside of my octopus go tariff so i uh, i need to find out a little bit more about this because uh, you know ultimately i'm paying for uh, uh you know i'm paying for this charge a lot a lot higher price it's obviously relative right because this is absolute peanuts compared to actual petrol or diesel but you know still um if if this had if this charge had happened between the hours of uh, two o'clock and four o'clock in the morning, uh, I'd be paying five p a kilowatt hour, and at this point in the morning, six till eight, I'm going to be paying sixteen, seventeen p a kilowatt hour, around that much. So you know it's going to be, um, you know, three just well, over three times more um, uh, money um, for this. So that's one interesting thing about the vehicle to grid. The other interesting thing is the response of the my energy uh, units so when the vehicle to grid system starts to push energy out onto the grid the my energy system of course picks up the fact that we're exporting energy it doesn't take into account the fact that the energy isn't coming from the solar panels it just sees exported energy coming from the house and it then decides to use the zappy unit and charge our zoe up now, um, that's kind of an undesirable behavior because clearly what we don't want to have happen is just deplete the energy from one car and put it into the other car because that sort of defeats the point of a vehicle to grid system. Uh, and the other thing that happens is if the, is if the Zoe isn't plugged in, um, is that it starts to heat our hot water up in the hot water tank. Now the reason I bring that up is because it's obviously a behavior that you know could easily be curtailed by uh, some more configurability in the my energy system in fact it, it may even be there already I just haven't looked at it um, but the interesting observation I had initially was that the charging of the car is undesirable but the actual heating of the hot water not so undesirable actually because actually then after we've e eaten our meal and we do the washing up if we don't use the dishwasher that is there's always something that needs washing up by hand um, that means we're not using gas to heat the hot water to do any washing up after a meal so actually I'd say that's desirable as a as a thing um, but I think really what it needs to be is configurable uh, so that you can decide whether that's something that you want or not. Um, but as as, a, as someone with a home which has got some of these little smart um, things going on, it's also it's also kind of being fooled by the vehicle to grid system. So that's a little bit interesting um, and something uh, I, I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting to kind of think, well, one's good and one's bad. So it's kind of, it's kind of your mileage may vary on whether you think that's good or bad or not. Um, indeed, the energy company might uh, you know, find it interesting whether that's good or bad. 
or not. But I'm thinking that when this is a this is a real kind of proposition, then you will be buying this and a tariff. So there will be a tariff that accompanies this uh, this system so that you know essentially when you do vehicle to grid however much is exported you're paid for that um, uh, you know you're, you're paid for you're given a credit essentially against your against your uh, energy uh, you know energy costs so um, that that is the way I can see that it's going to work in the future but anyway this is a bit of a trial so it's not kind of all it's not kind of all there yet anyway that's just a few graphs. I thought you might be interested in them. If you weren't interested, in it, I hope you had a really, really nice sleep after listening to that. Um, uh, and, um, you know, there will be a little bit more coming from this. I've got lots of other things that I should be shooting videos of, but it's just been really crazy. Um, and I've been having some equipment trouble. So um, I have recorded a few videos that just haven't kind of made it onto YouTube just yet. So anyway, I shall see you in the next one. Uh, don't forget to like and share and subscribe and all that. And if you didn't like it, send it to someone you don't like. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one.